Welcome to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. A podcast about events, travel, and the people who love both. Find more episodes at vacationraces.com. Welcome to another episode of Vacation Races and Friends podcast. We are talking Zion at Night Race Guide with Dane Craig. Dane, how you doing? So good. Should we give you a title? What's your title, Dane? Uh, you know, I'm just... Just Dane Craig? Dane Craig. The DC? Vacation Races guy. <laughs> are you the race director for Zion at Night? I am. Good. It's, you uh, and Lyle Anderson are both going to be there. Yeah, Lyle and uh, Anna and Brett... Beagley and Sherry Santiago and Kaylee Clifford. It's kind of, it's the vacation races dream team. Everyone dream team. I love it. So Zion at night, tell me a little bit about where this came from. Of course, 2020 has been weird. And what, uh, what happened? What happened? Well, there's a few things that have been going on. Maybe you should catch me up later. Yeah, I'll catch up. It's going to take a while. So Vacation Race has been really creative this season with giving our runners some different opportunities to try some different things. And that's where Zion at Night comes in. So tell us, what's the genesis of this event? So the genesis of Zion at Night, the impetus. The impetus, that's uh, a good word. The motivation was to, it's twofold. It's not to go out of business. That's a really good one in 2020. And... It's it's to give runners uh, an event that's not being canceled, something to look forward to and something to participate in, compete in, um, and to come enjoy and to, and to visit Zion. Nice. So Zion at night, of course, this is a night race that we're going to be operating here. Correct. Yeah. So um, in southern Utah right now, they have, you know, different phases like most states and communities are going through with, uh, with COVID-19. And in southern Utah, they're in yellow, which yes. means that no congregating of groups of over 50. Right. And so we, we created a race that would keep congregations to 50 or less. And, Perfect. Uh, yeah. And so uh, Southern Utah has always got people all over. Everybody wants to come see the beauty of this area, Zion, right? And lots of beautiful state parks also and other national parks. And, and so a lot of the uh, trails and everything would be very crowded. Not to mention that it, it's crazy hot. It is crazy hot. It's about 102 outside of our, you know, studio right now. Right. And so so we wanted to do something sooner than later. Um, and so taking all those things into consideration, trying to minimize crowds, trying to be compliant with health guidelines, um, trying to avoid the heat, we decided to do um, an interval start. So groups of 50 every hour starting at 7 p.m. So we run through the night. To keep tra- crowds small and to avoid the heat and to be compliant. And it just so happens that it's also crazy beautiful. It is crazy beautiful. Running through the southern Utah desert at night. I saw that moon come up last night and it is giant right now. It is going to be full and it's going to be beautiful for this event. Yeah, it's going to be great. Going to be great. So Zion at night happening this Saturday. Yep. And Friday Friday night and Saturday night. Yeah, Friday night. So we're going to do two nights back to back, Friday night and Saturday night. And runners have signed up for an hour time slot. Great. How many runners do we have? Can we are we expecting? Uh, Right now, we're a little over 800. So 800 people. So we've got a good group coming out. Yeah. Yeah. 800 people. And that was a that was an only about three weeks heads up. It was a pretty quick turnaround on that. I mean, it was a scramble for us a little bit, but I imagine even more so for Runners trying to figure out, you know, can I can I make that work? Can I clear my schedule? But yeah, eight hundred are coming, and that's from forty states. I know, wow. I know one woman who's because a lot of people are still they're okay traveling, they're not comfortable flying necessarily. Yes. So we've got uh, I know one woman in particular driving from Iowa. She's driving wow. all the way from Iowa. Yeah. That's amazing. Summer road trip to yeah. Zion tonight. I love it. So yeah, 40, forty states. states. That's impressive. And then twelve percent are running their first half marathons. Really, which would be a unique experience for your first half. That is really unique. And then 41% first time coming to Zion. I'm impressed with those numbers, Dane. Yeah. I, I didn't even realize that. I wondered if we would get, you know, more just local people kind of staying close, but people want to race. These runners want to get out there. They want to do something fun. And with vacation races, providing a safe way within all the guidelines, I think people just jumped at it knowing how beautiful it's going to be out there in that desert over the evening of this weekend. Well, we're glad they did. Yeah, well, I'm excited to see everybody out there. So let's go and dive into kind of the schedule. What can we sp- expect when we get there? Is there a packet pickup? How is this going to look the same? How is it going to look different? It's going to it's gonna look very different. It's going to look the same in that there's 13.1 miles. Yes. Most everything else will look 
uh, a little pretty different, different. Than we might expect. So, so the mileage is there, yeah. but things will be a little different. Uh, yeah. So for obvious reasons, so we won't have an expo, right? Um, and we won't have vendors. A uh, quick plug for one of our usual vendors, St. George Running Center. Yes. Um, if you're coming into town, because we don't have an expo, you should stop by the St. George Running Center. Huge sale this weekend. Yeah, big sale. Yes. Ultra shoes. Yeah. They got a lot going on. And uh, Steve Hooper, great friend of ours, and he's got all your running needs. So if you're coming into town on your way to the race, make sure you stop by the St. George Running Center. Yeah, they're just off the Green Springs exit here in St. George. You can see them right there. It's really quick on off. They're having a huge ultra running shoe sale on they what they do is when they take back exchanges and things with ultra they resell those shoes at a steal of a deal you're picking up ultra shoes for 60 bucks so it is a great deal and that's going on this weekend so definitely check by by st george running center so um so we're foregoing the expo and so what that's going to look like is every runner who's signed up has signed up for a a start time designated start time. and it's every hour okay um and so we're encouraging runners to show up at least 30 minutes or about 30 minutes before their start time. So let's say you have a 7 p.m. start time. Okay. You could get there as early as 630. Um, and we will have a bib pickup where you'll get your bib and your race shirt. Like all of our races, it's going to be cup free. Okay. Um, we won't be handing out hydro pouches like we normally do because the aid stations are going to be further apart a hydro pouch isn't really sufficient runners should be right. a little more self support so you should have. be carrying your own hydration with you correct okay yeah. if you don't know what a hydro pouch is say we've got some first timers here maybe who That's haven't true. been to vacation races the hydro pouch is a u- reusable cup that we use at our self-serve aid stations um cup free aid stations that we always use and those are provided if it's purchased with a with your bib when you register but we're not going to have those available this time so make sure you've got a pack or some way that you're going to be able to hold some fluid more than just those hydro pouches right and so then if you have a 7 p.m start time you can start at 7 p.m or any time between 7 p.m. and about 7.30 p.m. So we call, okay. it a, we call it a rolling start. We're just going to leave that start line open. It's just going to kind of be a window of time. So don't get there more than 30 minutes before, but you've got time to get yourself situated and get ready. Right. Yeah, exactly. Great. So take that time. We're hoping that this will thin crowds out a little bit and it'll be a little bit more of a trickle and kind of more at your leisure. So when I come to bib pickup, am I out of my car for bib pickup? Just looking normal, like it normally would just go to the tent that says bib pickup and we're ready to go. Yeah. So bib pickup, imagine you're in line at the grocery store. We're going to have, you know, signs trying to separate, keep you six feet apart and, and, uh, and come pick up your bib and you'll get your bib and your race shirt. We're also going to be transmitting on an, uh, on 95.1. Yep. So you can pick that up in your vehicle. Yeah. And we'll try and communicate certain things to you then. So, you know, if you see a long line of people, again, don't worry. It's a rolling start. You know, wait until there's a little low and then you can get out of your car and then go get your bib and, you know, start loosening up and get ready for your race. And all of this is located right there in Virgin, Utah, just off of the main highway. And it's right by the new hotel that's right there off of Colop Terrace Road, correct? That's right. Okay. Yep. So you're going to just park in there. Plenty of parking. Everything's going to be, you know, suitable with parking and everything. Yeah. Yeah. All the parking will be there uh, at the start. The start and the finish is they're separated, but it's in the same physical lo- geographical location. And it'll be right by where we're parking everybody. And so, again, because we're doing groups of 50 every hour with people arriving for their start, being out on course, finishing their race, um, there should be plenty of parking. Great. All right. And if you have run the Zion Half Marathon with us before, it's the same start line as you've seen in the past. Right. On our original course. So, yes. Okay, great. So we've got the bib pickup going. We've got the FM transmitter that you'll be able to tune into in your vehicle at 95.1 FM. So make sure to put that in your favorites. So you remember that once you get your bib, you've got a 30 minute window pretty much uh, of your designated start time. So if it's at seven o'clock, you have until about 730 to get out there. Rolling start just open. And once we're on course, what are we going to see? So once we're on course, we're going to be out on the trail. So we're going to head west on Highway 9 for a couple of miles. We're going to run on a dirt road that's parallel to the highway. So we'll be on a dirt road for a couple of miles and then we're going to turn on to Sheep Bridge Road. For a little bit and then we're going to hop on the gem trail which is a which is a great mountain biking trail. iconic trail here yeah. on the hurricane rim valley so so it, the course is uh from about mile four to i want to say mile nine uh maybe more like eight is it's about 500 feet of elevation gain it's pretty steady uh there's nothing crazy steep or anything but there is going to be a little bit of a climb there and then once you peek out on that then it's a nice little descent into the, into the and it is going to be 
dark. It, it gets dark around 930, 945 is what we're seeing these days. So are you requiring lights that everyone leave with lights that are leaving at like that seven o'clock time? Uh, how does that work? Yeah. So we are requiring that every runner has a, a headlamp. The courses will be well marked. We're going to have pink ribbons on the trails, um, letting you know you're still on the right course. We'll have wrong way signs, directional arrows, things like that. And so it'll be well well marked, but obviously it's up to every runner to be paying attention, to be familiar with the course, and to uh, bring their own Plus, headlamps. Plus, after like dark, that. after dark, you're gonna make you're gonna need to illuminate that area in front of you. Though there will be a full moon, you still want to be able to see the markers and things. So having that light is gonna really help with that. Yeah, if we get to run under the full moon, it'll be well lit. You're still gonna need and want a headlamp. Um, but there's also there's some clouds in the forecast, and so it could be. The moon could be, you know, overshadowed by clouds. And, and so you're going to be glad you have that lamp. So so bring a headlamp. Uh, I wouldn't trail shoes obviously aren't required, but mm-hmm. they are strongly recommended. This is a trail run. So if you have trail shoes, if you're comfortable running in trail shoes, bring your trail shoes. Um, the trail itself is it's a dirt road. It's a lot of hard packed, um, you know, some double track, a little bit of single track. Nothing terribly technical. No, a little bit rocky out yeah. there. Um, the climb's really nothing nothing technical. I wouldn't consider it a technical t- trail, especially that lower part of Gem. Uh, just kind of those gradual climbs up until you get out of there. But l- some rocky spots, but nothing yeah. really to speak of. So we are going to have aid stations. We'll have three aid stations. Okay. First one is about mile 2.8, close to mile 3. Okay. And then the second is um, at about 5.6. Okay. And then the third is about mile 10 and a half. Okay. Two of these aid stations, the first and the third, will be unmanned. And we're going to have big water stations there. We'll have gnarly electrolyte drink. We'll have honey stinger gels. Um, but they won't be manned. And our, our second aid station, about half about halfway through the race, uh, will be manned. At that about mile 5.6-ish. Mm-hmm. Okay. And we'll have, uh, we will have medical on course there if there's any If, any if there's any needs, that's need. the place that you're looking for. Okay. Right. Um, the aid stations. So again, in an attempt to be a little more hands-free, a little more well, just cautious. Yeah, a little in an abundance of caution. That's one oh, of boy. my favorite terms these days. <laughs> um, so we have a hands-free. We've developed a foot pedal, so it's like a drum kick pedal, and it okay. it hooks onto our water uh, valves. Great. So when you come up to an aid station, you won't need to use your hands. You can just step on the pedal. And it'll water will come pouring out. So, so when you get to that first aid station and everybody goes in with their hands, use your feet. It's all right. about your feet. Yep, that's right. So we'll have those on course again. Water, gnarly electrolyte drink, and honey stinger gels, as well as uh, toilets. Okay. At each at each aid station. Every aid station will have toilets. Are these uh, regular porta potties compostable? Por- what yep, are we going to see? Our, these are our composting toilets. Great. Okay. All right. So you'll see the composting toilets out there. Three different aid stations, so you've got plenty of opportunities to fill up. It will be warm. We're in southern Utah. The lows have been around. They don't dip down into the low 70s until you get closer to sunrise. So it will be warmer at night. So definitely plan for using that gnarly electrolyte drink. And there's plenty of water out there on the course for you. So any gear drop or anything like that? No, we won't because the start and finish are just right next door to where you're parking your car. Okay. Um, And because it's also not going to be you know, extreme weather conditions. Yeah. You're not going to need a long sleeve. Don't yeah. start in a long sleeve. <laughs> yeah. We won't, we won't have a gear drop. Okay. Um, but obviously if you, if there's anything in particular specific that you need, just bring it and leave it in your car and it'll be waiting for you when you finish. Great. All right. So we've got our aid stations, our three different aid stations. We've kind of gone over the course and where that's going to be. And is the start and finish line, I know it's in the same location, but I'm not running back on the highway the same way I came out, correct? It's kind of a loop course. It's it's a loop course. Okay. All right. So you're not going to be coming back the same way that you went out. So don't look to come back on that same highway. It's going to loop you around and come kind of in the backside of your start line. So, okay, great. So we've got that. And what happens when we get to the finish line? We probably won't hug you. Probably not, which is so sad for me. I know. It's so sad, but that's okay. It's all right. We don't want anybody to get sick. So we do want to maintain social distance. So when you get to the finish line, we'll obviously have some water and and gnarly electrolyte drink there for you. We'll also have a first aid tent, but that's going to be very first uh, self-serve. Okay. It's going to be some basic needs, like if you need to, you know, clean up some scrapes or... Right. You need a Band-Aid or something like that. Mm -hmm. Sure. We'll hopefully have have some ice and some plastic wraps and things like that, but it's going to be self-serve. Um, every runner will get a, a snack box. Okay. We'll have bananas. We'll have chocolate milk. Great. Um, we'll also have some coffee. I don't think it's gonna be too cold, but. Right. But some my, people just like to have a cup of coffee when they're done. something to sip on. Yeah. 
we because of the short turnaround time now we uh, made this clear i think when people registered but because of the short turnaround time we haven't received uh, finisher medals yet just yet right but every runner will receive a finisher medal and so i know that's a little lame it's a little disappointing um you want you know not to have the thing there for you when you finish but we're going to send that out to everybody great when can they expect that do you know a time frame on that hopefully by the end of the month we'll be oh, shipping great. them out yeah. okay so just should, a just a couple weeks it's, yeah it's just gonna be a few more weeks until we have them and then as soon as we have them we're gonna send them out to everyone well i think everybody knows shipping has been a little weird lately yeah. with along with everything else shipping's been a little weird too and of course with this with registration just opening less than a month ago you know we're kind of up against that so you will get that finishers medal that is well earned but just not right there at the finish line what about spectators what if i have people coming with me they should probably stay home. They should stay home. Yeah. yeah. So put on the event. Obviously, we've got to make some changes. And, you know, part of the thrill of an event is spectators, you know, as you're coming down the finish shoot or your loved ones waiting for you. Um, but given the circumstances and the restrictions that we're operating under, um, we're going to say no spectators at the finish line. Now, if a spectator is sitting in their car waiting for you, um, we do have we will have race joy enabled. So you'll need to look in the race guide to where you can download the link. But if okay, great. Both a runner and a spectator have race joy on their phone, they can track their runner and they'll see uh, based off GPS okay. where, where their runner is. And so they'll know, Oh, they're about to come into the finish shoot. I can go cheer them on and then escort them quickly to our car. Great. The, great. The, the main, the main point, um, we're obviously not going to, you know, call the police on any spectators. Sure. But the main point is, you know, to, to be compliant, to be safe, um, we need to minimize congregating. And everybody can work together with that. You know, if you're, if you have people who are going to come, have them meet you back at your hotel or back at your campsite, something like that, so that we can maintain that because we, we do, I mean, we're in the town of Virgin and, you know, we do have things that we have to meet. So help us out with that, with your spectators, but we love them very much. Make sure they know that we love them, but, <laughs> but get the but, Heck out of here. but not, not at the wanted. finish line. They're not we love wanted. Them, but they're unwanted. Unwanted at the finish line because of COVID nineteen, not because of us. So that's okay. So a little bit different experience at the finish line, but it's still going to be fun. We're still going to make a great. It's going to be a great experience. It's going to be awesome. We're just grateful to have something out here to be able to do. So any other thing on the course, Dane, that you want to mention or anything like that? Um, not specifically about the course, but we'll probably talk about timing real quick. So yeah, the, the event will be timed. Okay. Um. And, but it's going to be manual timing. So right before you start the race, we're going to have somebody that is going to scan your bib and that starts your, that starts your clock. Okay. So, so make sure you get to that person who's going to scan your right. bib because every runner, you know, because we have a start every hour and then even within that hour, it's about a 30 minute grace window. Like we're going to have st runners starting their race at all different kinds of times. Sure. So uh, you, you'll have your bib scanned right before you start and then you'll have it scanned as soon the, the second you cross the finish. Line. Okay. And that will be your official time. Okay, perfect. Um, we're going to have awards like we, we usually do. Yeah. Um, but those awards and age group awards are going to be based off of um, chip. We call it chip time. Chip but, time. But your man, your, your individual bib time. time. Okay. Right. So those will be compiled after the event. And then that's when we can expect those. Yeah, exactly. So because we're manually doing it, we have to upload the data. So results will be available soon after your race, but we're not going to have anybody who can tell you your unofficial, not even your unofficial time right. in the moment. Like it, you know. Yeah. So run your own watch on hours. that and then give us a little time, 12, 24 hours before. Where can we find those results after that time period? They'll be posted on our website. Okay. All right. So look to the website, vacationraces.com for all the results and we'll make sure that you get it in your email as well. So a little bit different on timing. Just make sure that that volunteer or that staff member is scanning you when you start your race and when you finish the race. And then we'll compile all of those different chip times, those start and finish times. And then we'll have awards five deep, just like we always do, but they'll be in a more virtual manner this time. So yeah, cool. All right. So we got timing. We've talked about aid stations. We've talked about finish line and spectators. So Dan, I do have one question. You mentioned race joy. Is that an app, a tracking app? Yeah. Race joy is a runner tracking app. So um, there's instructions on in the race guide, uh, which also link you to the website where you can download the app. But basically a runner downloads the app and then has the app on while they run their race. Okay. And then the spectator also downloads the app. And so uh, that 
enables the, you know, we upload the course. And so as a spectator, you can look on the app and see where your runner is on the course. Okay. You can send them like text messages or like oh, great. audio messages, cheer them on, things like that. And yeah. also know when they're getting close to finishing. Kind of a fun platform. So just make sure that if you're a runner, you download that race joy, check the check your race guide, your PDF race guide that we gave you for all that information. You get that downloaded and then your spectator or whoever wants to track you has to download it as well. Right. And if you do, if you are a runner that uses the race joy app, there might be a few surprises for you. Oh, very nice. So of course, so keep your headphones in. Okay. uh, Oh, that's cool. It's, it is a cool app out there. And then what about course maps? Do you have any course maps that we can take with us? Anything like that? Yeah. So Avenza, this is, the description is also in the race guide, but the Avenza is an online course map that we use that can be downloaded and accessed off course or sorry, <laughs> offline. Offline, right. So it uses your GPS and it tracks you so you can see if you're getting off course or if you are where the course is and how to get back to it. Yeah. So if you don't have any any service, Avenza will work. So you just want to download the Avenza app and then you're going to find the Zion at Night map on that Avenza app. Right. Yeah. So Avenza is an app that has all kinds of maps on there. Yes. Ours is one of them that has been uploaded to it. So so download the app and then find our course and, and download that and then do all that before you run your race. And then it doesn't matter if you have good service or not. You'll, sure. You'll you've always got that you. map. Yeah. Super handy to have, especially when you're out on the trails. And it is nice because you can see exactly where you are in comparison to where you're supposed to be. So Avenza for your trail maps and make sure you download Race Joy for the tracking and have any of your spectators or anyone around the country who wants to, you know, cheer you along. They can use that Race Joy app. So cool. And we got some different things with this Zion at night where In the past, if you've done a vacation races event, we have club hikes and we have some trifecta activities to encourage you to get out in the park and enjoy the area. But when I was looking at the race guide, you've got a whole new kind of scavenger hunt. It's really cool. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Everybody who comes and runs the race. I mean, again, we said 41 percent have never been designed. Yeah. Some people are going to be here for 24 hours. Some people are going to be here for three or five days, you know, and and so we, we created the scavenger hunt. And we're trying it out at this race um, to see if it's if it's got legs or not, if people enjoy it. But Great. but the idea is instead of focusing on specific club hikes for the trifecta, um, we are we're doing it's the official Zion Explorer Club. And so runners each we have a bunch of activities, and each activity is worth points. And as you complete those activities, you earn points. And if you earn a minimum of fifteen hundred points, then you get your your little official explorer badge. Very nice. And I mean, there's lots of different activities like um, things like go to the visitor center. You can earn a hundred points going to the visitor center, lay down on the grass at the lodge for 15 minutes. You can earn 100 points there. And then there's even level up points. What does the level up points mean on the scavenger hunt? Yeah. So level up is when you do an activity, but you go to the next level. Ah, I see. Take it one step further. I see. Let's look at an example. So this is kind of an odd one, but so one challenge is to see a bighorn sheep Okay. Which you have no control over, right? You like, don't you have any air, control over that. Not. And like Colleen was saying, this time of year, you probably won't. It's a little warm for them. But but, uh, but you see a bighorn sheep and you get points. And then to level up is you just leave it alone. Ah, you just, very you nice. You don't try and approach it. You don't do anything. You don't try and feed it. Good. You just appreciate the moment. L- and, take a little picture. And then you get ex- you get level up. And so, nice. you know, and then another example would be, so if you visit like River Rock Roasting Company and to level up, you eat a Becky's famous bun. Those uh, those amazing like big cinnamon rolls. Yeah. They're, they're incredible. They're at River Rock. So go to River Rock. You can visit there for your challenge for the scavenger hunt or you can level it up and eat one of those cinnamon yeah. rolls. Or go to Oscars and enjoy a delicious meal or level up and eat an Oscars breakfast burrito all by yourself. Oh, man, that would be challenging right there. But that sounds really yeah. good. So it's all it's all kinds of activities. It's not all food challenges. No, they're not. Those are just that's where <laughs> Colleen and my that's is where at right that's now. where we're thinking about is all these fun things and great places that we love to eat in Springdale and Hurricanes. So so oh, that's one of them too. So one of them is pronounce Hurricane uh, the city like a local. Colleen, okay. can you, would you? I I just said Hurricane. It's Hurricane. Right. It's spelled Hurricane, but it's Hurricane, and it may feel like a hurricane when you're out there, but. We pronounce it Hurricane around here, and you're going to drive through Laverkin as well, or maybe even Tokerville on your way there. So we've got some strange names here in Southern Utah. But however much time you have, um, you know, use this use this scavenger hunt to kind of put it together your itinerary. You know that we've got we 
included the club hikes and the trifecta activities uh, as possible activities. You know, we've got angels landing in their observation point, um, you know, going hiking Timber Creek Trail up in Colob Canyon. Now, two of the three that I just mentioned happen to be closed right now. Yeah, let's talk about Zion National Park for just a minute. They are not fully reopened at this point. There are, if you know about Zion National Park, they actually run a shuttle system into their main canyon, which gets you to most of their hikes. That shuttle system is not running right now. The Springdale Town shuttle system is not running right now either. So they are allowing cars to drive into Zion National Park, but there's 400 parking spaces up inside the park. And so it's limited to those first 400 people. The canyon opens at 6 a.m. So if you do want to go in and you want to get in there and get a parking spot, do go on the early side rather than or go on the later side. One of those. But you can still park at the visitor center. There's plenty of parking there, but it will require you to walk into any of the places in the canyon, which can be a pretty significant walk. If you were to do Westrum Trail, wanted to go up to Scout Lookout, Angel's Landing is currently closed. They're not allowing anyone on Angel's Landing at this time. It's a five mile walk into the grotto just past the lodge in order to access those trails. So keep that in mind when you're visiting. Yeah. Pl- you'll need to plan a little bit. Unfortunately, yeah. you can't be as spontaneous as you might want to be. You'll need yeah. to plan a little bit with open times and limited parking and walking. Um, I, I love Zion National Park and there's, there's just treasures upon treasures of things that you yes. can do in there. Uh, but also on this list are a lot of things that aren't even inside park boundaries that are spectacular. You know, Eagles Crag is outcropping that you'll be able to even see on your yeah. on your run. Well, yep. you it's can in the dark, so maybe you, won't, you might be able to see the silhouette of it. Yeah. Um, but it's a great hike, and it's outside park boundaries. And just outside the park boundaries where you're going to get amazing views, but you're just outside those park yeah, boundaries. Yeah, you've got Grafton Cemetery, yeah. which is a really cool yep. historical, uh, you know, old ghost town and an historical cemetery. Also where they filmed uh, the raindrops keep falling on my head scene from Butch Cassidy and the, and Sundance, the Sundance Kid. Kid. Yep. Yeah. And that's out, you know, that's uh, just right outside park boundaries. And so we've even got activities in St. George. We've got San Hollow, the oh, reservoir, which you know, is beautiful. It's yeah. It feels so good this yeah. time of year. Too. Yes. So uh, understand that Zion has a capacity problem and we don't want to add to that problem. So hopefully you enjoy, especially those 41% of you. It's your first time you get yeah. into the park. You'll see some wonderful things, but also make sure you take advantage of a lot of the activities that are you know, yeah. a lot of the recreating. That's yeah. Outside and the there's, there's a lot of different places as, as a side note, uh, you mentioned Timber Creek, that's on the Kolob Canyon side of Zion national park. That is Which closed, is closed yeah. at this time as well. So there's no access to the Kolob side at all. Now across the street from the start and finish line, you will find Kolob Terrace road, which is a road that heads up to the higher elevation points of Zion national park. And we were up there just last weekend. It's not as much traveled. There's some trailheads up there that are beautiful. There's some really beautiful, beautiful vistas that you can see up there. Um, Even Lava Point, the highest point in Zion National Park, you can go there. We were there on Sunday with two other people. So it is a nice place to go if you kind of want to see a different view. And that's just across the street from the start finish line. And you got to drive up about 20 miles from there. So yeah. So just be sure and educate yourself on current closures, trail closures, parts of the park that are closed. Again, this list is kind of meant to be an anytime list. We're, we're hoping to utilize it, it yeah, it next year for Zion year. Half, yeah. So there's going to be things on here that that are closed. So don't come at me with like, <laughs> you told me to go do this hike yeah. and it was closed. What's wrong with you? And another note, a lot of people, have, because Angel's Landing is closed, they want to go do Observation Point, which is on the opposite side of the canyon from Angel's Landing. The approach to Observation Point from the canyon, which is Hidden Canyon, through the Weeping Rock um, pullout and trailhead, that is closed indefinitely. And that is closed not due to COVID-19, but due to a rock slide. So yeah. if you are looking at doing something like observation point you do have to go over to the east gate side over by zion ponderosa and there is an approach that way for observation point but just know that that weeping rock hidden canyon all of that is actually closed indefinitely and a lot of the emerald pools are actually under construction at this point too so there is a lot kind of going on in the canyon but go to the national park service website for zion canyon and they'll give you all the updated information on that but it's still beautiful in there i mean we were up on westrum just the other day and and it's gorgeous. So it's it's still there. If you can rent a bike and yes. bike the canyon, yes. that's, that's one of the best ways to see it, especially yep. right now with you know limited traffic. Yes, it's a great time. You don't have shuttles. You have very limited traffic. And all the outfitters there in Springdale, a lot of them have bike rentals. So that's a great option. Or if you're coming from out of town and you can bring your own bike with you, great way to see Zion Canyon is by bike. Yeah. So.
Yeah, so a lot of great things. Well, I'm really excited. So Zion at Night, we are just hours away from getting started and it's going to be really exciting. I'm. How many people do we have signed up for the different time slots, Dane? Like, does it really range? Oh, yeah. So what would you think would be the least popular time? I would think like two or three in the morning would probably not be my choice of time to go run. Sure. Yeah, you'd be right. (laughs) <laughs> Mo- most people don't want to run it two or three more. Yeah, but yeah. What, what I thought was interesting was 7 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m., all pretty consistent. Yeah. 10 p.m., a little less. Okay. 11 p.m., like, there's this huge dip. Interesting. Nobody wants to run 11 p.m., but midnight, it spikes again, and we're all full for the midnight start time. Like, Huh, that's s- really interesting. People, people, there's something about midnight. Yeah, there's something about, you know, I, don't, I guess something about being able to say, I started my run at midnight. Yeah, well, not that's as, pretty not cool. Not as cool to say, I started my run an hour before midnight. Yeah, p.m. yeah. Yeah, 11 p.m., uh, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., 3 a.m., those are the dogs. Kind of, kind of the, yeah, and it's kind of that time that everybody just wants to sleep about yeah, that time. But there's, there's... I haven't checked this morning, but as of like two days ago, yeah. there was some, one of the nights there was only one person signed up for like the 2 a.m. slot. Huh. That person has a, the, a free private, rain, a private half marathon. I like, love it's like it. We're all there just for that person. I think it's great. Yeah. It's oh, gonna be great. That, that's going to be great. Well, the staff is excited to be out there with you. So as you come air high fives, air hugs to everybody. Um, we're glad that we could pull this off, but we definitely need your help as well. Remember just to keep yourself safe, make sure you're washing your hands, you're keeping your social distance and help us help you to stay safe as well. So we're doing everything we can on our part, but we ask you to step up and do your part as well. So it's going to be exciting. It is. Yeah. Remember, just be excellent to each other. Thanks for joining us in this experiment. I mean, that's really what it is. We, you know, we're we're pretty confident it's going to be a great event. We've, we've paid attention to all the details, but at the end of the day, it's our first time doing this. It's an experiment. So we're glad that you guys are Kind of on this on this roller coaster. Well, us. and not many people are going to be able to say that they ran the inaugural Zion at night because you never know. Is it going to be an inaugural one yeah, time it might only? Have been the one and only. We we don't know. You I, just never know. Yeah, there's there's a lot of interest. We're hoping to do more even this year. Maybe even come back and do a Zion at night later in the year. But. But yeah, you, you just never know. Yeah, so it's great to be a part of it. We are so glad that you are a part of our Vacation Races family. This is a Vacation of Races and Friends podcast. We're so glad that you joined us. We have more episodes that will be coming out. Just make sure you're following us on social media as well as at vacationraces.com. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. You've been listening to the Vacation Races and Friends podcast. We love your feedback. Email podcasts at vacationraces.com with comments, concerns, or stories you'd love to share. Make sure to watch for more episodes coming soon to vacationraces.com. This episode was directed by Robin Rogers and produced by Colleen Rue in the Festival Sound Studio. For information about music licensing, contact Dane at vacationraces.com.